dreams that you dream of, dreams really do come true. for Gabby. Oh 
bluebirds fly And the dreams that you dream of Dreams really do come true Welcome everyone to our very first virtual Casa Materna event. So on behalf of our Guatemalan staff, our US space volunteers and our new friends in Sweden, I wanna welcome all of you. I'm coming to you from Danville. Um, my name is Erica McElroy. I'm an emergency physician here, but I'm also the founder and executive director of Casa Materna. And one year ago, we would never have thought that we would have this sort of event. But last spring, we had to cancel our annual fundraiser because of COVID. Um, and before we had even had that um, cancellation, Allison Kotner, who's our director of fundraising and who organized much of today's event, um, she and I were just brainstorming ways that we could share this work that we're doing with a broader base. And so here we are. 
And we've reached uh, people today, I'm sure, or we are going to reach people who we would never have been able to um, share this with at a live event. So we're really grateful for that. And uh, for me, it's a reminder that, you know, we're going through all of this COVID stuff right now and the heaviness of it. And yet there's still these really great, beautiful things that come of it. And I hope that as you experience this event today, um, that you're going to see that same sentiment that in the midst of the really hard reasons that we have to be in Guatemala, there's just this lovely, beautiful thing happening down there um, through the Casa Materna. So you are at a virtual concert and we have five members of the Swedish Radio Symphony Orchestra who have compiled 60 minutes of music just for us. And um, I'm, we're all really appreciative for all the time that they have put into this. Now we're gonna divide these 60 minutes of music into segments and between each segment, we're gonna share patient testimonials, you're gonna meet our staff, we're gonna do some Q&A and we're just gonna share our project and of course, give you guys an opportunity to support the work that we're doing. So put your feet up, relax, um, grab some coffee, some hot chocolate, maybe wrap some presents. Um, if your house is crazy, like mine typically is, you're gonna be distracted and taken away, but come on back, join us um, and enjoy the event. We will be recording today. So um, you can, we'll put it on our website so you can watch it after the fact, but um, we hope you can stick it out with us um, and enjoy this really huge treat that we have. So we're going to start our event off by going to Guatemala and our administrative director on ground, Marlin Cholotillo, is there waiting for us and she's going to start us off with a Christmas blessing. Hola, Marlin. Hola. 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 Buenas tardes. Vamos a orar un rato. Eh, bendito Dios, gracias poderoso Padre, por Jesús nuestro Salvador. Señor, llene de gozo los corazones a los hermanos, que en nombre tuyo, poderoso Dios, empezamos este evento, empezamos esta actividad, en nombre de Dios Padre Todopoderoso, Llene de gozo al dador alegre, bendito, glorificado Dios. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Gracias, Merlin. And we're going to meet Merlin later and hear about her work at the Casa. She does awesome prayers and leads awesome meetings. So that's why we asked her to do this. Thank you. Um, she's kind of the spirit of the work that we do there. Um, so what do we do? We exist um, to combat, combat the disparity that exists in pregnancy and delivery care for indigenous women in Guatemala. And we believe that women should not have to choose between traditional culture and safe childbirth. We do that by coming alongside them in support of uh, these traditional practices, specifically in supporting the midwives of um, this community. And so they call their midwives comadronas. And actually midwives have been foundational um, throughout all of history. And the first documented midwives were in the book of Exodus and God used them to save the lives of these Jewish baby boys. Um, midwives are also the first people to have practiced resuscitative efforts to save lives. And I really think it's quite likely that a midwife was present at the birth of Christ. Um, God may have sent angels to attend to Mary, but the culture at that time, it would have been really common to have a midwife. And how appropriate that there is no mention of her because these women really have been ushering in life and comforting women from the beginning of time with very little recognition. So what we do along with partner organizations like our sister organization, Saving Mothers, is we come together to support these midwives. And we understand that oftentimes they are ill-equipped to do the work that they were called to do. Um, they have a name for this calling, it's El Don. And I have come to believe in El Don. Um, it's a true gifting from God that some of these women have 
to it's this intuition, um, this ability they have to um, fulfill these midwifery uh, skills. And so we come alongside them, we support them, we equip them to do the thing they were called to do. And we kind of marry this and this support of traditional practice with evidence-based medicine and national and international standards. So that's a little bit of the what um, we do. And later we're gonna talk about how we implement that and what our model looks like. But I wanna first introduce the director of fundraising to you, Allison Kotner. She has organized this event. She is a dear friend. Without her, I do not know what we would do. And I am so grateful um, for all of the work that she does for the Casa Materna. So Allison. Thank you so much, Erica. And thank all of you for joining us today to learn more about Casa Materna and how to help spread the joy of giving this season. There are three ways to give. First of all, you can visit our website at https colon slash slash casa materna atitlan.org slash donate, or you can text materna to 50155, or you can send a check to Casa Materna 363 Stam Road, Milton, Pennsylvania 17847. And we will share all of these details with you in the chat dialogue of your Zoom meeting, so you can refer to them throughout the session. Um, also, I want to mention that for this event, we have received a very, a very generous matching donation of $20,000. So every dollar you give up to $20,000 will count double if donated through this event. And we are so thankful to that generous donor um, who is someone who has walked with this mission from its inception. Uh, next, I want to direct your attention to the Q&A option of the Zoom meeting. So this is where if you have a question that comes up during the event, something about Casa Materna or the music today, um, please feel free to enter it there. And we will try to answer some of those live throughout the, the concert today. Um, and then also we'll take some time at the close of the concert for anybody who wants to stay on a bit longer and um, ask some additional or listen to some additional questions and answers. So without further ado, I will hand you over to my brother in Sweden, James Kent, who is also a donor and longtime supporter of Casa Materna. Um, and I will let him introduce the music and also his colleagues from the orchestra. Hello, greetings from Sweden. My name is James Kent. I'm a member of the Swedish Radio Symphony Orchestra. Um, we're gonna be playing a few pieces for you in this first set. Uh, the first two pieces are originally piano works. Uh, the first piece is by Maurice Ravel. Uh, it's the promenade movement from pictures and an exhibition. The second piece is by, by Claude Debussy uh, called La Fille aux Chevaux, or as uh, in English, uh, The Girl with the Flaxen Hair. And the last piece is a Christmas motet by Francis Poulenc called O Magnum Mysterium, which represents uh, the, one of the nativity scenes. And this one is depicting the Virgin Mary. So uh, please enjoy.
Uh, I am in such a happy place right now because what is better than brass for the holidays and to look at that cathedral is absolutely, it's gorgeous. Um, so I'm in a really happy place um, and I'm really thankful for the Swedish orchestra for doing this. So we talked a little bit about the what of the Casa Materna and so I just wanna talk a little bit about how we do this work. Um, you know, the indigenous people of Guatemala have almost twice as high mortality rate as the non-Indigenous people. And, um, you know, there are many reasons for that. A lot of it is access to care. Um, our hospital is on a good day, an hour and a half, probably two hours on windy roads. Um, there are misconceptions, you know, that keep people from going to um, a professional to receive care. There are um, financial barriers. Um, Oftentimes the women are treated poorly when they go to the government um, facilities. And so there are just a number of reasons. Um, and so we um, have used the model called the Costa Materna that was developed by an organization called Cure Americas. And so the crux of this model is that we train women to be skilled birth attendants and they are trained to identify high risk we help facilitate getting those women to higher levels of care once they are identified. Um, and then the healthy pregnancies stay with us and they deliver at our facility. And then our, our staff are also trained to uh, respond to unanticipated emergencies. And so there are estimates that up to 90% um, of maternal deaths are preventable. And, and so not a lot of work has such a huge margin for impact. So even if we were doing half of what we're doing, we could make um, really huge um, progress in um, and a dent in this maternal mortality, but we're training them to identify preeclampsia. We're training them to identify gestational diabetes and so on and so on, getting these women to help. We come alongside them um, when they have complications and help them navigate through that. Um, so that's kind of a quick synopsis of what we do. Um, I cannot do this alone. I have this huge team and um, I have a partner in all of this, um, Dr. Jessica Oliveira, and she has taught me so much about this work. Um, I'm, I learn every day from her. Uh, we're in constant communication. We've become um, quite a team. Um, and so I'm gonna ask Jess to join us right now. Hey, Jess. Hello. Hello. Good to hey, see you. <laughs> hey, Jess, I'm wondering if you can share briefly um, just a little bit about the history of the Costa Turn and how we started, and then how you and Saving Mothers um, work with us. Okay. Um, so yes, uh, well, Saving Mothers was established about in 2009. So we, um, we've been working uh, for a long time in Guatemala and uh, the School of Power, I think was really what kind of brought us together, Erica, to start working. Um, Eric and I met in 2015 through Lesbia, who you will all meet later. She's um, one our lead um, homodrona and birth attendant at the CASA, um, and someone that I've been working with um, and teaching and, and um, advocating for uh, for many years. I think we first met in 2010. So um, Lesbia met Erica um, working in San Juan and kind of made that introduction. She knew that you know, um, they had this beautiful vision to bring the Casa Materna, but they needed, uh, you know, the missing link. And so then that's when Saving Mothers kind of came along. And we really expanded our sisterhood with the Casa. Um, and uh, when Erica approached me with the idea of the Casa, I mean, it was just so perfect. It so perfectly fit this community um, with uh, and met all the needs. And um, so that's, that's how we were born. And the beauty of it is all of the staff at the Casa studied with Saving Mothers in the School of Power. And it's a 12 month curriculum where they get didactic and clinical training um, with local women in their own uh, language as well and in their own communities. And it was, it's, uh, it was a really beautiful way for us to also recruit and hire our staff. And we already know that they had this more specialized training which is very lacking in most of these medical facilities um, that are available for the community. And so we continue to work together, Saving Mothers and Casa Materna as one big sisterhood. Um, our staffs, are, are, they live in different locations on the lake, but the beauty is that they support one another. They help training with 
um, for each other. They help training um, in the community. We get together and we host events. Um, and they will call and reach out to one another for any kind of help or coverage. And to me, I thought that was a really beautiful thing to see how they came together. And they all studied together through the School of Power. So Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that we really promote is collaboration with organizations doing similar work. You know, we don't need to recreate the wheel every time. There are people doing excellent work. And so we, um, we reach out to them in doing that. So you are going to hear more from Jess in just a bit um, in some of our Q&A. And, and um, uh, but we are going to go to Sweden. And I want to let you know that after this piece of music, you are going to, for the first time, which this has been like my hope and dream to connect our supporters with our on-ground staff. So you're going to, for the first time, be able to get a tour of the CASA and throughout the program, meet our staff. So let's go now to Sweden and James. The screen yes, is I'm first. here. Thank you. Uh, we'll be playing a few more pieces. The first piece is uh, by Italian Renaissance composer Andrea Gabrielli uh, called Risica del Duodecimo Tono. Uh, the second piece is by uh, is from an opera, the final aria from Purcell's uh, Dido and Aeneas, that's uh, kind of labeled Dido's Lament. And the final piece is by German Renaissance composer Thomas Stolzer uh, called Fantasy. So please enjoy.
Hello everyone, welcome to Guatemala, welcome to Casa Materna. I hope you're enjoying the music. My name is Gabriela Maldonado and I am the on-ground director for operations here at Casa Materna. And I have been lucky to become the first Guatemalan to be in this position, which means that all of us now uh, here in Guatemala who are part of Casa Materna are Guatemalans ourselves. And today we will be sharing with you a few videos that we recorded here with the local staff so you can see more of the work that we do. And we're gonna get started with a tour of our building space. So we'll get to that in just a minute. Casa Materna is located on the outskirts of San Juan La Laguna on the shore of Lake Atitlan in the Western Highlands of Guatemala. Before we moved into this building four years ago, no one was using it consistently. But now we share the space with the health center run by the Ministry of Health. We occupy half of the second floor. As you walk up the ramp, the first thing you will see is our large outdoor sink or pila. On occasion, we also need to extend our waiting area to this space as well. Now we're walking into the main building and we have the bathrooms to our right. You have seen bathrooms before, so I won't take you there. I want to take you instead to the left, up this little flag of stairs, where we currently have our kitchen. We had to move it into this space, using it creatively after the Puesto de Salud moved into the building earlier this year. It's pretty basic, but it has everything that our staff needs. Now we're back into the main area walking into the waiting room. And before the pandemic, we would have a long line of people waiting to be seen for prenatal care each morning. However, now we have started to set appointments so we don't get big groups of people gathering in here. Now this is the prenatal control room where birth attendants and birth assistants perform regular checkups in the space. They check for vital signs, check for the baby's heart rate and growth, and you will see more of the action in a later video. We also perform basic ultrasounds in this adjacent space. This is the labor and delivery room, and we really encourage our patients to move and find comfortable positions. This is Lady, who had her third son with us this week, and was indeed happy to be part of this video. Behind Lady is where newborns are taken for their first assessment. 
and this is our pharmacy because we make sure that every patient receives prenatal vitamins and other medications that they might need. There is one more room for us to visit up here, and this area is divided into two sections. First, we have the space where the staff person who is on a 24-hour shift works and spends the night. And then in the back, we have the recovery area. Now, please meet Angela and her family who had her first daughter with us this week as well. And the great thing about having your family come to visit is that they can bring you home-cooked meals. Now for our final stop, we go back downstairs and this is the office that I share with Merlin, the office administrator, and where she welcomes all of our new patients. So that's it for our tour, but we hope to see you up here one day. Thank you so much, Gabriella. So as Erica mentioned, you will have the opportunity to meet several of our staff, our incredible staff members throughout this event. And if we had 100 donors willing to give $40 per month, we could support the salaries for all 11 of our indigenous staff members for the entire year. So if you become a monthly donor at this event, your cumulative donation for the entire year counts towards our matching gift. And as an incentive to come alongside this mission and become a monthly donor, we have gathered some handmade gifts from Lake Atitlan to um, incent you to join us. And to clarify, if you become a monthly donor or if you are a current monthly donor who increases your monthly donation, then we would love to give one of these lovely gifts to you as a thank you. So again, the ways to give are to visit our website at https colon slash slash Casa Materna Atitlan.org slash donate or to text five to text materna to 50155 or to send a check to the address that is in the chat of this dial of this Zoom meeting. So now let's enjoy some more music. James? Uh, hello again from Sweden. Um, we have a couple more pieces for you, but before we play, um, as uh, Allison mentioned before, uh, we're not only, I'm not only performing uh, this concert, but we, and my family and I are donors of the Casa Materna. We feel uh, a very special connection to the Casa because, you know, with both my boys, uh, the pregnancy was quite difficult. And if they had been born in uh, Guatemala, in this area of Guatemala, without a Casa Materna, if there had not been a Casa Materna, then uh, they probably wouldn't have survived. And my wife would definitely have been in danger as well. Uh, so we really believe in the work that's being done here to protect mothers uh, and their children in this region. Um, we're very honored and grateful to be able to help with, uh, with this wonderful organization. Uh, the next piece we're going to play is uh, by uh, uh, my favorite composer, uh, Anton Brooker. We're going to play one of his core works called Traumen und Wachen, uh, which is, uh, means uh, dreaming and being awake. So please enjoy.
Welcome back to Guatemala. And you have been hearing a lot about our midwives and you will finally get a chance to meet them right now. We have three birth attendants and three birth assistants who provide care to women before, during and after birth. And despite their young age, they are well-known comadronas or traditional midwives in their communities. They have also received traditional additional training with Saving Mothers School of Power, as you heard, and also from other institutions. And in the next video, we will hear more from them. Hola, buenas tardes. Un abrazo para todos ustedes, los que están viendo. Me llamo Lesbia Chorotillo. Estoy trabajando en áreas tutujiles hace 14 años como comadrona. Hace cuatro años empecé a trabajar en casa materna como comadrona y auxiliar de enfermería. Casa materna para mí es mi segunda familia. La confianza entre los pacientes y con mi equipo de trabajo es una gran alegría. Muy buenas tardes, mi nombre es Carmelina Morales. Soy originaria de Chichicastenango, del departamento de Quiché. Soy partera profesional y llevo dos años trabajando en casa materna. Siento mucha satisfacción en ver el, a la mamá con una sonrisa o con llantos a veces, pero de felicidad. Y también el compartir esa emoción de escuchar el llanto del bebé cuando nace. Hola, muy buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Joana Álvarez. Soy enfermera profesional y comadrona del municipio. En casa materna llevo trabajando cuatro años. Mi deseo para casa materna es seguir trabajando en la comunidad, poder contar con un edificio y propiedad propia de casa materna, como también lo que deseo es contar con una ambulancia propia para hacer coordinaciones en cualquier caso de emergencia que se nos presente. Jess is going to join me um, for this next little bit, but before we get started, I just have to say um, something about the talent of the three women who you just met. They are phenomenal. Um, they are, they have a skill set that's above and beyond um, any of the women that we've met. And I think we could have searched all of Guatemala and not found um, greater talent. Um, so we're really privileged to have them. Um, and Jess, are you on? Yes, I am here. I was just trying to, um, I wanted to have ladies look at uh, the, Q, uh, the question that we had and try to answer it in the next spot. But we will get back um, and um, Taryn, we'll have Allison answer your question a little later. Yeah, and we will have um, a Q&A session for anything that we don't answer during the event um, at the end of uh, the, um, our event today, we'll be able to have time to answer those. Um, but Jess, you've been doing this work for over a decade now, and you've worked really closely with the Ministry of Health, with the uh, local clinics. Um, and from your perspective, um, why has the CASA been so impactful um, in the community? So San Juan is a very small community. There's a population of about 10,100 people. Um, San Juan itself, where we're located, is a village, and then there's three much smaller villages that are more rural. It's located in a very difficult place to access transportation-wise as well. The roads are really poor. Um, like Eric had mentioned, we're about an hour and a half away um, on these mountainous uh, roads just to a local hospital or any facility that can accommodate an emergency, an obstetric emergency or a C-section. Um, and so, here in this community of 10,000 people, there's one health center that provides free care and also birthing services. 
However, this health center never has the resources. Um, this health center has a reputation for discriminating against its own community. So these were the things that were brought to us over the past 10 years working in San Juan. And so what the CASA does is the CASA is addressing all of that. Um, we are located in an area where it is much easier for people to access us. Um, and we provide services, we provide, we have, we always have supplies. It's something that, you know, you hear the community when you ask them, you know, what is it that you like about the CASA? And, and, you know, it's not just the way everyone is treated, but the fact that we always have supplies. It's never asking the family to go buy something to come in and get treated. And that's what happens in the government clinics. They lack a lot of resources. They lack trained personnel. And so here's an institution that, that um, has trained personnel but everybody there is part of their community. And um, there's that connection, which is beautiful. And it's respectful of their traditional practices and you know, invites the family to participate. These are very different practices than what's happening in the government clinics. So I think we've had success because we've been able to really introduce this, the biomedical world you know, um, to the community in a, in a way that isn't scary, that isn't intimidating. And um, the local birthing center sees about, they have about maybe three births a month and we're birthing about six to ten babies a month um, and so we're serving more than just the San Juan community we're serving four other villages around the lake and we're growing so um, I think that speaks in for itself. Yeah in, we were actually at a meeting with the Ministry of Health <laughs> last year and they said well could you offload some of our deliveries? We're just, you know, could you deliver from the some and we're, from the hot? And we said, um, yeah, we don't quite have the resources to do that. But, um, but anyway, it was really, I think, um, a sign of the confidence that the community, um, even the professionals in the community have in our CASA. Okay, so we are gonna go back to Sweden now um, and hear a little bit from James. All right. Um, back in Sweden, um, we were going to play a few more pieces for you. The first one is a traditional English bell that I, that I think a lot of people know. Uh, this is uh, arranged by Bill Rackenbach and that's Scarborough Fair. Um, the next piece is a small portion from a very long opera from D, uh, from, by Richard Wagner uh, from Die Valkyrie. And the last piece, we're going to be playing a short uh, Christmas medley, also arranged by Bill Rackenbach. So please enjoy.
so beautiful. I love it. And I love looking at that cathedral. I can't get enough. Um, we want to share a little bit about our COVID response with you. You know, the impact of COVID has been great all over the world and um, our surrounding communities in Lake Atitlan are no exception. And so tourism, which is a really big part of their economy just came to a stop and um, government transportation shut down. And, and just for all of the reasons, you know, that we also experienced, there was just a lot of job loss um, and need. And so we often respond, you know, when you do this work, there are layers of need. And so it's not, necessarily directly related to what we do, but when babies are born with issues, we help point them in the right direction and get them help. And we had one baby who needed neurosurgical care, who we helped get care in Israel. And so as COVID came and we saw these needs, we wanted to do something really practical. And so we've been able to give 138 care packages to our patients, um, current patients and recent patients, which included um, not only food, but soap and masks. Um, we really based a lot of our response on some early prediction models uh, that estimated that maternal and fetal mortality were going to increase as a result of COVID and, and mostly due to just lack of access. Um, it was hard, the clinics are closing, it was hard for patients to get um, to their um, healthcare needs. And so we initially stopped taking patients for about two weeks until we could properly prepare our staff. Uh, and after that, we decided to uh, continue to take on new patients and actually saw a little increase in our new patient enrollment um, because other uh, providers, government clinics, uh, private clinics in the area had decided um, to shut down. And so, um, we also spent that time early on and continued to develop COVID protocols um, throughout this pandemic. And so I'm gonna to go to Jess and um, Jess, if you wouldn't mind, you were really um, at the center of developing our protocols. Um, could you just explain how we prepared our team um, for COVID and how we're preparing them now? Well, I mean, it was a bit difficult, unfortunately, because there was no direction even from the government as how to prepare your clinic and be safe. All of the guidelines came down for the hospital, right? And for OR and hospital systems, but for small clinics like ours, there was very there was very little direction globally. So luckily, Erica and I together with what we do know and what we have here in the US working, um, you know, her in the emergency room and me in a small um, uh, mobile clinic in um, underserved communities, we were able to kind of create um, a protocol that uh, would be safe for the clinic. And then we also have to start thinking about the community. And what was interesting is as we were creating these protocols just for the CASA, we realized that, you know, um, Saving Mothers and the CASA, you know, our own staff had a lot of these fears that we were seeing in the community. And it wasn't just the community that was having this misinformation and the fear around COVID. And so I think what we really learned was that we had to break down some cultural misconceptions and we had to really talk about misinformation and fear. And then we had to go back to the basics of transmission and contagion and all these concepts that, you know, we are so basic for us um, because we see these since, you know, we're in school and we're little all about washing hands and it's just so different there. And so I think it was a really big learning lesson, but it's gave us an opportunity to, to really teach these, the community and the women and help people feel safe. And I think that's evident in the work we we're doing and our numbers increasing because at first there was a lot of hesitation to continue to work and we wanted to support them. We wanted them to feel comfortable to continue to work. And um, after multiple in-person in training sessions and uh, lots of education around COVID and how to keep yourself safe and the fact that we were able to provide all this PPE for them, I think they finally felt safe. And then when they had this feeling going back into the community, the community saw it. And, and all the education and all the help that we provided, you know, I think it was really critical. Um, and it really just kind of put us out there even more in the community as really just being a part of this beautiful community. Yeah, and you know, then our team was able to go out and help train the comadronas and supply the comadronas and even supply some of the government clinic workers with the PPE they needed um, and train our facilitators um, who work for us in the remote villages to and do the same. we recently just started implementing our postpartum visit home protocol um, prenatal visits so that we can actually go to these really rural villages where they are not, you know, transportation is shut down. So now we can actually go over there and provide this care and see these women and screen them and provide education and also identify new pregnancies and see how we can address their needs if they can't get into the clinic. So the, this COVID protocol has, has 
been actually pretty remarkable and really has allowed us to even have further outreach in the community than we did before. Yeah, it's been quite an endeavor, but um, I think we've, you especially, have really done uh, a great job at that. So we are going to go to Sweden for some music, um, and after that, we are going to hear from some more of our staff at the CASA. So I'm so excited again for you to meet our um, our birth assistant. So I will turn it over to James. All right, we got a couple more Christmas tunes for everyone out there. Um, the next thing we're going to be playing is a little uh, little 12 Days of Christmas. And then after that, we're going to be playing another Christmas motet from Francis Poulenc uh, called Holy Christus Noctus Esque. It's a, this is a depicting a scene from the Nativity. And this one is the uh, Christian's response to the news that Christ is born. So um, enjoy the music. Thank you. 
Here in Casa Materna, there is always a qualified person who can care for a woman in case she shows up with an emergency. Our birth assistants are young women from San Juan de Laguna who have studied nursing and have attended Saving Mothers School of Power and want to become midwives at some point in their lives. They are passionate about maternal health and two of them are mothers as well. And now we will hear a little bit more about them. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Jesús Criado Jefeín. Empecé a trabajar en casa materna en el 2018 como asistente de partos y facilitador. Hola, muy buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Wendy Petronila y otra Mires. Ahora mi cargo acá es eh, asistente de partos y facilitadora. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es yo soy María Silvio Hernández y en el 2018 empecé a trabajar como asistente de partos y facilitadora. Son cuidados y acciones que recibe la mujer durante el embarazo, identificando tempranamente las complicaciones y los señales de peligro con el objetivo de tener un parto en mejores condiciones de salud, tanto a la madre y el niño. Casa materna para mí me brinda mucha confianza, seguridad y apoyo. Casa materna me ha apoyado de la mejor manera durante mi embarazo, porque yo en un momento, eh, hace dos años, estuve como paciente. Siento mucha felicidad porque la mujer me brindó la confianza y voy a estar ahí cuando ella me necesite, haciendo ejercicios, relajándose. Me llena de mucho amor viéndola con un bebé en los brazos. Deseo de verdad para casa materna que se unan más donadores para que siga más y más esta casa materna que nuestras mujeres indígenas necesitan. Y desde ya les deseo una feliz Navidad y un próspero año nuevo. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, and thank you to all of our staff for doing this important work in your community. So as you've heard, we have a staff of 11 in Guatemala, but outside of country, we are all volunteer from everyone who helps out with the website and coordinating social media um, to our program director, Erica McElroy, and all of the musicians who are generously sharing their musical talents and gifts with you today. We are all of us unpaid volunteers. What that means is that every single dollar you donate directly supports the on-ground efforts to support this mission. And it helps us reach the goal of lowering maternal and infant mortality in Guatemala. So just as a reminder, you can refer to the um, donation information in the chat dialogue, but you can visit our website at https colon slash slash casa materna atitlan.org slash donate, or you can text materna to 50155 or you can send a check to Casa Materna at 363 Stam Road in Milton, Pennsylvania, 17847. Thank you so much for your consideration and I will give you back to James. All right, um, we got a few more pieces for you, but before we play them, um, we, I would like to thank the musicians who played uh, today. Um, the Swedish, the members of the Swedish Radio Symphony Orchestra, uh, the solo trombonist Håkan Björkman and Mikael Oskarsson uh, played, as well as tubist Leonard Nord and a, a, a trombonist from with the Swedish Wind Symphony, Emilia Jortenhammer, 
played with us as well. Uh, much thanks to them all for uh, playing with us. They're really fantastic musicians. It was a, really a pleasure. Um, as well, we're going to be playing um, uh, a few more Christmas carols for you, uh, Jingle Bells and Silent Night. So please enjoy.
Encouraging women to attend their prenatal appointments is often not enough to ensure that women have everything that they need to receive their babies. So another important aspect of our work is community outreach and education. This has taken a different form during the pandemic, but to tell you more about it, I leave you with Merlin, our administrator who you met earlier in the, in the program. Hola, buenas tardes. Un saludo a todos. Eh, mi nombre es Merlin Catalina Chuloquillo Pérez. Soy administradora, soy educadora y también coordinadora de las facilitadoras que están en las aldeas más lejanas de San Juan de la Laguna. Soy la educadora de las mujeres embarazadas, eh, trabajando varios temas. Las dilataciones a veces no está. Y la preparación emocional y física antes de un parto, porque muchas, muchas mujeres no saben eh, qué hacer en el momento del parto. Como también eh, acompaño a las madres puérperas, o sea, ya madres con bebé, acompaño para eh, amamantar a los bebés enseñarle a las mujeres cómo amamantar a sus bebés. Dentro de esta pandemia tuvimos muchos problemas económicamente en cada familia, o sea, todos estamos afectados, pero por su aporte es que pudimos llevar comida a las mujeres mayas en las aldeas. De verdad, Dios les recompense, Dios les ayude en sus familias, en sus hogares y que Dios les dé una buena salud. I just want to speak briefly to um, the character and importance of the woman you just met. She um, has done a phenomenal job throughout um, our existence. And I could right now go to the very first month that we started this project and review all of our receipts and our financials. She is meticulous. She's reliable. Um, she has attention to detail. And we're really grateful because oftentimes in these sort of projects, um, you know, accountability can be a hard thing. And so she presents the finances every month and then our on-ground director approves them and makes sure all the receipts are lining up. And then they are sent to us where Monica Lansbury, who's in Florida, takes a look at them and reviews them and makes sure all of the, the financials are adding up. So um, I say that for a number of reasons, but also just to let you know that um, we are taking steps to make sure that the gifts that you give us um, are appropriately used at the CASA. Okay, we are going to, um, again, go to Sweden. And um, following that, we're going to talk a little bit about our hopes for the future, hear some patient testimonials, um, and um, we'll send it over to James. Sounds good. We got a few more Christmas carols for everybody. Um, you're gonna, we're going to play uh, Deck the Halls, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, and uh, a favorite of mine, O Come All Ye Faithful. So enjoy.
So beautiful. I love it. <laughs> um, we have, uh, we have test, a patient testimonial ahead. We have some more music. But before we do that, I wanted to talk a little bit about our vision going forward. Um, you know, we have had um, ongoing education. All of our staff are professionals, but professionals know that we need continued education. Um, we have a woman, Erica Miller. Hello, Erica. I hope you're on here, um, who is an OB nurse and would travel for a month at a time to help us with that. Um, during COVID, we've been able to have morbidity, mortality, and educational sessions online, um, but we'd really like to have a more um, sustainable way to provide that. And so we have some things in the works. So we really would like to um, hopefully get that started the next year. Also our building, you probably saw and heard um, that we are now sharing it. And one of our priorities in this project is to work with the local government clinics and that will not change. However, we really do uh, need more space for educational events with our comadronas and our patients and our community. Um, there's some mold issues in our building. So for a number of reasons, um, we are really looking for um, a new space um, and we have not yet mentioned, but we are expanding um, to Camotan, Guatemala. So it's been almost two years now that we started um, doing some groundwork for this new project. Uh, there is great need where we are right now in Lecatitlan. Um, but, you know, I've learned throughout this process that success begets success. So I realized we start in this place with need and then go to a place with greater need. And so we're going to hopefully replicate this project. However, understanding that not one size fits all in Camotan and Amelina Morales, who you met, one of our head birth attendants has done great work with the Comadronas there. We had a conference with them last, the Comadronas, I mean, last fall. And we hope to start uh, with Saving Mothers, a school of power for those Comadronas in 2021 and hopefully choose some of our uh, staff for the project going forward from that school. Um, I want to mention Dr. Um, Joel Strohecker and Dr. Jovita um, with the Camotan Clinic, who uh, we work so we have worked with um, to help develop this. 
Um, so we are going to now again go to Sweden for our, I think, second to last um, music um, session of music, which I am so loving, James. Thank you. Thank you. It's gorgeous. Well, it's a real pleasure. So thank you. Um, we got a, we have a few more Christmas carols for you. Um, we, I do want to mention the venue. You probably noticed this nice uh, church that we're playing in. That is the Gustav Vaza Church in downtown Stockholm. It's, it's incredibly beautiful. And uh, thanks to them for letting us play uh, this concert there. Um, the Christmas carols we'll be playing is We Three Kings. And the second one is It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. So everyone just enjoy your coffee and listen to the music.
One of the strengths of our model is that all of our staff is indigenous, all of our clinical staff is indigenous, and they speak the same language as our patients. And even though you hear them speaking in Spanish in our videos, they're really multilingual and speak the local languages. And last month, Merlin and I visited one of her recent patients to hear more about her experience at Casa Materna. So for the last video, we will hear from Ana Edilma and her family. Muy buenos días. Eh, mi nombre es Lucas Quiacayin Culú. Eh, soy de acá de San Pablo de la Laguna. Eh, acá me acompaña mi esposa Ana Edilma, la, la pequeña Andrea Joana, que nació en casa materna hace 18 días. La nena también, mi hija Nidia Edilma, ya casi va a cumplir los 13 años. Y tengo otro hijo. Les voy a hablar sobre los servicios que presta Casa Materna. Así, por medio de, de, una, de, de una prima de mi esposo, y nosotros acudimos a Casa Materna. Y a mí eh, me pareció muy excelente el servicio que nos prestaron. Tanto, eh, por ejemplo, eh, control durante los nueve meses de embarazo. Estar en casa es, eh, eh, es muy probable o es más eh, un porcentaje de correr eh, un poco o de riesgo porque uno no sabe la hora y el día o el momento en que puede tener una complicación. Bueno, en los centros de salud, como es una institución pública, a veces... Eh, a uno no lo atienden bien, pero en casa materna sí es el servicio, es muy excelente. Cuando uno tiene eh, un problema, por ejemplo, en caso de nosotros, eh, todo el embarazo eh, iba bien, todo estaba bien. Ya después del, del parto, pues eh, nuestra hija pues presentó un poquito de problema y gracias a casa materna, pues... Ellos nos brindaron eh, el apoyo necesario. No les conocemos, pero sabemos que también Dios eh, puede recompensar ese apoyo que ustedes eh, brindan a esta institución. Thank you so much, Gabriela, for getting that together. Um, I bet we all know either from our own experience or a friend's or a sister's or a mother's, someone who experienced a complication through pregnancy and childbirth and who, if not for the capable trained hands of their birth attendant, would not be here today. I know that's the case for me and that's why this mission has touched my heart so deeply and I feel compelled to do something to help. Every mother deserves access to a safe and humane birth experience for her and her child. This Christmas, please consider giving the gift of life. And you can do that by visiting our website at https colon slash slash casa materna atitlan.org slash donate, or you can text materna to 50155, or you can mail a check to the um, address that's in our chat. So thank you so much for listening today. And thank you so much to the brilliant and generous musicians for your beautiful music. Um, I want to wish all of our attendees and their families the blessing of joy and peace in 2021. Well, thank you. The, the music was really a pleasure from our side. And, and thank you 
uh, all you ladies who did really uh, a lot of work and really give a lot of time and effort to this fantastic cause. Uh, we have a few more um, Christmas tunes for you guys. We're gonna play Joy to the World, Good King Wenceslas, and Oh Holy Night. So please enjoy.
I love that. Thank you. You know, I think we would be remiss not to mention some other um, individuals who have been such an important part of this project. You've met some of them today, but there are many who um, have gone unseen and Christ Wesleyan Church, specifically Shirley Homan and Chad Heisey. I wanna thank you for being our fiscal sponsor. I also want to thank Andrea Kent, who um, is a volunteer for us and she helped with our social media, our website, and has been so instrumental in helping with today's event. And our newest volunteer, Kim Brocate, who is um, a midwife in California. She has been, again, so helpful with social media and helping us with, with this. Um, I also wanna mention is Monica- Kim's face, just uh, hello, or is she here? No. Kim? Oh yeah, we could say hey to Kim. Are you there, Kim? Poor Kim is post-call. <laughs> we also wanna say, um, you know, thank, oh, there she is. Kim, do you wanna come on and say hey? Hey, hi, let me see if I can get my video going. Hello. Hello. So Kim's the newest member to our team and we're so grateful. I feel so blessed to have found uh, Casa Materna and to be able to learn about the work that you guys have been doing and to do anything that I can to help. It's um, just been incredible uh, learning from all of you guys and getting to play just a little, little part in um, helping with the work. Yeah, and her husband is Guatemalan and uh, she has worked in Guatemala. So on the other side of COVID, we're really looking forward to getting her involved more. And I yeah. should mention Andrea Kent is husband to James, sister-in-law to Allison. So we're all big one happy family here. Um, I also wanna say thank you to my sister, Monica Lansbury, um, who has really helped with the finances and accountability there. And um, Throughout this project, we've had this group of women who have come down to be our on-ground interns and they've been phenomenal. When um, this project first started, you know, I, I just couldn't be there. And so a young woman, Anna Silva, was able to go down and really do a lot of the groundwork that was necessary. And she was with us for a few years um, along with her husband, Kenneth, and they were really um, important in laying the foundation. And so I just wanna mention them and say, thank you. And then we had Emma Brofsky, Casey Main, Jacqueline Karasik. Um, and I just keep thinking like, they can't all be this talented, but they are. And they're these new grads who um, major in anthropology and public health. And they have these amazing skill sets, skill sets that I do not have. And they've taught me a ton. And um, Gabriela Maldonado, who you've met um, is, right in line with all of them. She's doing an exceptional job and we're, we're thrilled to have her. And um, we thank her. She actually did all of those videos that you saw today and coordinated that. So it's quite a feat and her job is uh, not for the weary individual. So thank you, Gabriella, for what you're doing. Um, and of course, to, the, to our new friends um, in Sweden, you guys uh, made this extremely special, extremely beautiful. Uh, we all needed it uh, in the midst of COVID and all that's going on. I know I feel lighter um, and I'm gonna go back and, and keep listening and watching some of these. So thank you, James, and, and please thank um, your orchestra members for us. You well, know, I'll absolutely thank them. It was really a uh, really pleasure on our side. Thank you. Yeah, you know, it, when God planted the seed in me six years ago, I could never have imagined this is what would happen. Um, you know, from all of these people you've met, this beautiful thing has blossomed. And one of my favorite things about it is that all of these people have been able to use their own giftings and their own niche and contribute. And we all have different abilities. Um, and we would just invite you to whatever you're gifting, whatever your ability to come alongside us. Um, we ask you to come join our family, support this work. Um, we love it. We've fallen in love with it. And um, we hope that today um, you are also falling in love with it. We have an encore performance um, 
coming up. And then after that, if you want to stick around, we are going to have some Q&A for those of you who want um, to participate in that. So for those of you who will not be staying, I just want to say on behalf of all of our staff, we are grateful for you. We could not do this without you. And um, we wish you lots of joy and health and peace um, this holiday season and then in the year to come. And James, I will let you now introduce right. our encore. Thank you. We have one more encore piece to end this uh, great event. Um, it's uh, Johannes Brahms's most famous piece, the vegan lead, which everyone might think, what is, I've never heard of that piece before, but everyone's definitely heard this piece before. Uh, in Spanish, it would be Cancion de Cuna, and in English, it would just be his lullaby. So everyone enjoy a nice lullaby. This is staying in for sure. We're keeping it in. This is live concert, baby. Live concert, baby. <laughs> <laughs>